Hello everybody and welcome to the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey and I'm joined as always by Sam Proof. Today we're talking all about getting started in OBS Studio for beginners. So we're going to unpack some of the things that you might need to know in terms of actually getting started with OBS. We know it can be a slightly overwhelming piece of software. We want to try and bridge the gap a little bit for you today and hopefully make it a little bit more achievable. But Sam... I know you're a little bit older, possibly a little bit wiser. <laughs> How has your week been? It, it's been a crazy week. Yeah, I, uh, I celebrated my birthday. I turned 50, which I don't know if... Let's see. I do have some gray, but other than that, people <laughs> think I'm lying. So, yeah, no, I assure you that's real. And, and the horrors I've seen have uh, <laughs> been, been a plenty. Um, yeah. It, other than that, it's been okay. Uh, a lot of family stuff and some trials and tribulations. And then for anyone following the cute avalanche journey to 4,000 watch time hours on uh, YouTube, we passed uh, 3,300. So we're getting Ooh. there. The countdown is, is going. Um, our original goal was basically yesterday. Um, which we did not make because we had some downtime and we had to recover a lot of that downtime for the live stream. Um, so now I'm guessing a week and a half to two weeks from now, we should hit it. Nice. How's it going with you? Yeah. I, 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 it's also been a very strange and long week. And to be honest, I'm very grateful that it is the weekend now. Um, I thought... Given that you only turned 50 once, I thought I'd dress up a little bit, so I don't nice. normally wear a suit and tie, but here we are. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's exciting. Um, and it's it's great that Cute Avalanche is, is actually getting those watch hours. And yeah. I'm hoping that you took some advice that I gave you and that uh, people watching on your YouTube channel will automatically be converted over once this show ends. But I guess we'll wait and I see. I did, although I... We restart the stream multiple times, mm. like twice a day, because we have to get the the twelve hour block. Otherwise, yeah. you lose whatever is after twelve hours. Um, so I definitely had pre done it to redirect to whatever the stream was at that time. Mm -hmm. So it'll mostly it'll just forward people to the archive of the stream and not the live instance of it. That was the one thing I didn't do because today we decided to have some tech issues. <laughs> we sure did, um, and it's. I, I guess let's talk about that before we get stuck Oof. in because um as as much as we love the the Atom vertical plugin um it, it it has this new feature which is is basically a virtual uh, a vertical virtual camera and again yeah. I had no idea what the point of this was but I reached out to Atom and they kindly sort of advised that the main use for it is actually uh set, setting up your your show or your your live stream in OBS to actually send to TikTok streaming uh, desktop software. So that's yeah. that's the main reason it exists. Um, you do need to be careful though, because uh, the the vertical virtual camera has a tendency to override the horizontal one. And we do, use, we, we do use the horizontal one in this show and sure enough, it, it, it caused some issues and some angst before the show. So yeah. in some ways, this is going to be a much more relaxed, um, you know, despite how I'm dressed, this is going to be a much more relaxed show than usual. Yeah. But if you do have OBS Studio questions, if you want to know things about live streaming, let us know in the chat. Big hello to CG who's joining us hey, uh, today. Thanks for, for being here. So I guess, uh, Sam, maybe you can just let people know what is OBS and why should people care? Sure. OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software, is a open source broadcast software. Uh, it is totally free um, and it is very powerful. It matches up with anything in the industry at this point, like all of those things that were around to do live NFL and all of that kind of stuff. You can do all of that stuff with OBS and more at this point. Um, I know there's people still out there using Wirecast. You're wrong. You're just wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it is, it is a very powerful broadcasting tool that you can use to live stream whatever you want to just about any uh, live streaming destination that you can think of or multiple. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can do just very customizable uh, shows with a variety of different layouts and dynamic uh, elements like text and images. And you can do playlists of videos and just uh, stream to your heart's desire, whatever it is you want. <laughs> Absolutely. And I guess the, the thing that we have sort of heard anecdotally is that 
with great power often comes great overwhelm. So yes. I guess the thing that I like to tell people is even though it's got all of the buttons and all of the features and all of the settings, you don't need to know probably 95% of those to get started. So yeah. we want to try and... never uh, use them. <laughs> yeah, you, you totally never will. And it's funny because sometimes people will come out of the woodwork and ask me very specific questions and I'll be like... Yeah, I've never, I've never had need of that, but I can, I can see if I can find out. But yeah, I guess the first thing that we probably need to to talk about is uh, actually downloading and installing OBS. So yeah, it is really, really yeah. important that you go to this website, obsproject.com. Uh, unfortunately, we do live in a world where there are bad actors, and sometimes people are impersonating th th this piece of software to spread malicious code so make sure you definitely come to obsproject.com from here it's actually pretty straightforward it is also uh, cross-platform so you have options for windows mac and linux from this screen you can literally just click one of these buttons it'll take you to a download page you can run the installer and you're you're pretty much good to go i just wanted to mention too that it is possible to actually run a portable version of obs and uh i do have instructions on that on on obs uh, on johnlacy.com rather uh, so if that is something you're working with, and I guess that's the, one of the other things, like if, if OBS does release a major version, it's often a good idea to run a test just to make sure all your plugins and, and settings work work nicely. Because if they don't work nicely, you kind of, uh, you know, you're potentially in a, a world of pain there and you kind of want to avoid, <laughs> you know, doing that. So if there is something that you rely on in terms of your show, uh, you can uh, get that up and running. Yeah, so, or, or wait three days and, you know, watch the Discord for OBS to see all the people pulling their hair out. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, good. Glad I didn't do that. <laughs> it's funny. In, in some areas of my life, I, I would describe myself as an early adopter, but usually with software, I sort of hold off. And like every, I don't know, I want to say three or four weeks, just before this show is set to go live and I turn on my computer, Microsoft are like, you really should install Windows 11 now. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not sure I want to do that right now, but I'll get back to you on that one. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good idea because occasionally there will be bug fixes, especially in those minor releases. But I, again, like don't never, never update things like five minutes before the show because it's just a world of pain. Yeah. <laughs> So once we've actually got uh, OBS sort of up and running, it can look a bit like this, Sam. And this, I think, is why people get scared. Yeah, this is the big black void of doom. It, it just, it's very intimidating, especially if it's not in dark mode. And it's like just the, the white with just the big black box. <laughs> it's somehow <laughs> more intimidating, I think. Um, but yeah, this is akin to just throwing yourself into uh i'm gonna write a novel and here's an entire ream of paper and what do i do now absolutely yeah. um so yeah i mean that's that's definitely something that that's worth keeping in mind um so from here i guess uh, you know if uh and I'm, I'm doing a couple of different things on different screens, so just bear with me for a second. But essentially, uh, if you go to the file menu, you do have the settings. And as Sam sort of alluded to there, um, if you do want a different sort of color scheme, they do have different themes here. So if, if the black on black and the gray isn't for you, I mean, there is light. Um, and again, that changes pretty quickly. So, I mean, you can certainly yeah. check out what, what you're used to. But again, because we're appealing to people that are probably just getting started, we'll leave it on the default. Um, so there are a number of great settings here. I guess the other thing that I really wanted to show you, but I can't show you because it only happens the very first time you open OBS, is that it'll actually ask you um, mm -hmm. if you're looking to stream, if you're looking to record, or if you're looking to the virtual camera. And it'll actually want to uh, sort of give you some some options in terms of uh, default settings that are, that are good to go. Uh, the important thing to remember there is that it actually, like, it doesn't really matter too much which one you choose there. You'll still be able to do all three of those things within the software. It'll just um, adjust some of those settings. Yeah. Yeah, it has, like, a little wizard that it'll go through, which is useful. Mm-hmm. But not necessary. You can skip the whole thing and come back to it. <laughs> sure. So I guess, um, like Sam, once we are sort of presented with that that big black box, um, what what do you recommend as the as the first thing that we actually do? So I think you know, before you even get to that point, you should actually sit down with yourself and think about what it is you want to do and what that should look like visually. Maybe sketch out a few boxes, like make a list of 
these are the elements of the thing that I do. So if you are, for example, a gamer, you're going to want gameplay and maybe a camera, assuming you want yourself on camera. If you're doing a podcast type situation with a guest, you're going to want multiple cameras setups uh, and so on and so forth. You're doing like a big critical role style D and D campaign. You're going to want like eight cameras and maybe a screen capture and like some other dynamic interface. So just kind of make a list of all of the elements that you think you're going to use on a, on a show to show basis break those down into like, how might I want those as scenes? Like, do I want just a two by two of me and my guest talking? And do I ever want to go to like full screens of those things and so on and so forth. And then maybe draw some layouts of how that looks like, which would look like this box and then two little boxes or, you know, one big box with like a little box in the corner. Uh, and so, you know, and, and, and so on, like you can find a lot of examples of what these would look like on obviously all the streaming platforms to grab ideas from. And once you have that, you can go into OBS and start laying out your scene. So uh, your scenes, and we've, we've kind of talked about a lot of this in depth in other previous episodes, um, your scenes are going to be a collection of those sources. So this is camera one, that's camera two. Maybe you have some text, you have a screen capture, you have gameplay. Those are all independent media, if you will, or sources. Um, sure. So, and I, I do have an example to share with everybody in a second. Yeah. I just want to say hi to Walter, who's joining us, Walter Strong the Third from The Huddle. Uh, thanks for being here, Walter. It's great to great to see you. Um, in terms of, uh, and again, this this notion of scenes can be a little abstract. So sure. um, one thing that I used to do on my other show, which I haven't done in, a, I haven't done this show in a while because I've, I've sort of put my resources into my audio podcast. Um, but essentially I'd have these different, different scenes here. So the first one would be uh, sort of a screenshot of, uh, of the thumbnail of my show and what it's actually about. It also have the words starting soon. I actually use an OBS plugin uh, that, that creates these wave visualizer bars around it. So that's sort of synced up to some music that I play before I get started. Then I head over to a scene of just myself. Um, and then I've also got some some comment integration there. So if I want to say hi to somebody, I can bring their comment on the screen. I've got another one that's me sharing my screen. I've got another one which is sort of sharing the screen, but without me sort of superimposed. So I guess the other thing that's worth uh, mentioning is that I'm always in front of a green screen. So it's not a massively difficult thing for me to do in OBS. So I like to do that. It's a really great way of actually putting yourself in the in the the action, I suppose, of, of the screen demonstration. And because I do a lot of software demonstrations, I can do that as well. And then finally, I have this thank you scene, which is pretty much identical to the, the starting soon scene, but it's just says the words thank you. And I guess the other thing too, that uh, just down the bottom, I've, I've sort of noted that I have buttons on my stream deck, so I can just sort of move between these nice and easily. But each of these scenes is sort of made up of individual sources. So these are things like images and videos and your web camera and your audio um, and, and sort of colors and graphics, anything that you can sort of add to, to your scene to really show or, I, I mean, to visually show or to, you know, hear the, the yeah. those are essentially the, the two dimensions of that. So I guess, um, like Sam, it might be a good idea. I'm, I'm just going to show, uh, again, this is sort of the portable version of OBS that I'm running for today's demonstration. But essentially, and I might even just make myself a little bit bigger so people can see this. Go for um, it. But basically, uh, down the bottom, and I might even resize this a little bit so you can see more of it. Uh, <laughs> I haven't actually used this particular um, thing in a little while, so... Ah, that is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're figuring that out, I want yep. to say that, that those five scenes that John kind of laid out are a really good example of just what uh, a starting show could be. You have like an intro and an outro, which are very good opportunities to then also run like uh, your theme music and or clips or a playlist of past you know episode highlights and things like that. And then those sort of three main scenes where it's, like the, uh, you know, just John, right? Just your host. Then you have the host over 
the uh, the instructional, whatever it is, you know, the game capture or the screen capture, and then one that's just the screen capture. I think those three are a really good starting point for anyone who wants to get going and doesn't really have a strong idea of like, this is what I want this show to look like. Just kind of steal that idea, you know, go with that. And that's a really great place uh, to get going. It gives you three things, five technically, but that you can move around with. You have a good flow of your show where it's like, this is my intro. From my intro, I go into me talking to people uh, answering chat and stuff like that. And then we go into whatever I'm presenting and then you can kind of toggle between just the source or me on top of the source kind of thing. And then you wrap it up and go to that outro. And I think that's great. Simple scene collection show format. Are you good? Did I stall enough? Yes, you did. That was great. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and it's, it's funny even because I'm today, I'm actually working between OBS and Restream Studio. So there, there are options on my screen. So um, I guess that's the thing that that's, that's why I like sort of presenting in OBS is because I, I, back when I did that show, it went for about 30 minutes. I had a very particular structure. I had sort of five mm -hmm. or six uh, scenes that I could switch between. I kind of knew what I wanted to cover. And I mean, I'm certainly happy for, for questions to take me in other directions, but I, you know, I guess it's the thing, like it is possible to be quite overwhelmed by all the various options, but um, we will, uh, we'll jump back into our scenes and sources in a second. I just want to take a look at this question from Walter. So, um, Walter, so what do you believe is the normal time frame for a beginner to fully grasp OBS when they're going live? That's a really interesting question, and I I don't know. I mean, it depends a little bit on how technically savvy they are to start with. Um, but again, I think um, there are a number of, of of different moving pieces here. So I mean, I would I would give you yourself um, a, a decent window. I guess the other thing we're focusing today pr primarily on live streaming, but the other nice thing about OBS is that you can just record yeah. your screen with it. So. To me, it's it's in some ways it's just a completely different way of doing a presentation because if you were recording video takes and editing them together, that's something that you do as two separate parts. Whereas you can do an entire presentation in relatively real time um, in OBS. But again, you do need to plan. I, I guess really you need to plan for both of those, but you do need to sort of have a clear idea of, of where you want to go. But again, um, like honestly, uh, Walter, I do have a video from my other show, Coffee and Content, where I, I talk about um, the OBS Studio Challenge. And there I sort of explain how people can bring themselves into the scene. They can create a single scene and with a bit of branding for their company or their product or, or their show, whatever it happens to be. And to actually use that as the virtual camera. So that's, that's bringing it into places like Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Again, that doesn't require much in the way of live streaming destinations. And we don't have to worry about the audio in that instance either because it's, it's handled by OBS, uh, by Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever you're using. So, I mean, it's a great question. I just, I don't know how to answer it. I, I used to have a teacher that would say, how long is a piece of string? And it's, it's a bit nebulous like that, I think. Yeah, there, there's a lot of variables that go into this. Like, honestly, if you, if, if you just want to be, uh, a face on a, you know, a screen and that is the stream five minutes. Like that's all you need. Cause you're not going to be switching. You're not going to be adjusting things. Was, you know, you need, you know, may, maybe realistically 10 minutes of prep time to be like, if it's a blank sheet and you've just started, you have to install OBS. You have to go in, add your, you know, plug in your, your microphone and your camera. So who knows? Um, but yeah, Five to ten minutes, you're up and running. If you really just want a simple one, you know, one source scene, and boom, you're gone. Um, you know, if you want to do something more complex, uh, it, it could take an hour or more to like get that even set up. And then, as a you know, if you have a specific show flow, like if you have those five scenes that we've kind of established uh, as John's and that's what you're doing as that first beginner stream. Uh, if you're not super used to uh, the stream deck and all that, you're going to need some time to rehearse with that kind of thing. But I, I think within, you know, an hour of doing all the fancy setups and stuff like that and doing th some rehearsals, you'd be totally good to go on something that complicated, which isn't that complicated. 
<laughs> and I guess, um, like one other thing, I'll just bring up these these scenes again because one of the yeah. the traps, and I, I'm sure I've told Walter about this in the past, but one of the traps that I fell into when I started streaming was that whenever I would finish talking, I would hit the stop streaming button straight away, and there was always a bit of a lag between what I would say and it actually reaching the streaming uh, mm. destination. So. Basically, what would happen was it would cut me off mid-sentence. And yep. in some ways, this is why these start screens and thank you screens are sort of built into my process. The other nice benefit of them is that if I... And I, I try to play roughly 15, 20 seconds worth of music at the at the end of this stream, although I, I don't have it timed. It's, it's very much by ear. And again, I'm thinking about that in terms of actually um, bringing in... Um, you know, the, the end screens on YouTube, for example, so that, you know, in the last mm -hmm. little 20 seconds of, of the video, they can go off and watch something else or they can go to a playlist or they can subscribe. So, again, I, I guess the other thing that, that we don't have in there that I, I personally don't use but might be worthwhile for a lot of people is a be right back screen. So, if you are drawn That's away true. from the computer, it is a really useful thing to, to include there. But I guess getting back to our scenes and our, our sources, and again... I'm going to try a different layout here, Sam. If this doesn't mm -hmm. work, um, let that me know. But, okay, cool. So basically, this is this is OBS uh, running here. And I just wanted to resize this so you could see the bottom of this sources panel. But essentially, we've got our, we've got our scenes over here. So we can create different scenes and we can switch to those. Uh, but we really want to think about our sources. So if we click here, we have a whole bunch of different options here. So we can capture audio. We can use our browser source. So if we want to bring in special chat comments or if we want to feature a website or uh, a number of the the fun things that Sam does on Twitch, I, I think rely on, on browser sources. We've got yes. things like color sources, display capture. So if you want to share anything on your screen in much the way that I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. you can do that there as well. Game capture. I've never, ever used game chat capture because I don't really play that many games. And I don't know, like, Sam, is that something you've ever, ever played with? Um, I, I honestly don't remember if we specifically used that or if we ended up using a, uh, a window or video or a window or a screen. God, what's the display capture mm -hmm. for, uh, the particular games that we did at mob crush. So the game capture is specifically using like siphon and I couldn't tell you the, you know, requirements on what games you're going to use game capture for, but. You know, if you do games, explore that. There's there's more knowledgeable people on that aspect out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, YouTube is your friend. You, you'll find tutorials and just about everything. Uh, we got things like images and image slideshows. It's funny, for my day job, I have a number of promotional... Um, they're basically backgrounds and most people in my team will just have a single static background. But because I go through mm -hmm. OBS because of my green screen, I actually have five different ones and they very slowly fade in between each other. It's, it's a really elegant effect. And it's funny because you can be talking to somebody on a meeting for ages and then towards the end of the meeting, they'll notice and they'll go, oh my God, that's so cool. How on earth did you do that? <laughs> and I can, I can explain it to them. But We've also got media sources. So again, if you wanted to play audio or a pre-recorded video, you can bring those in there as well. We do have the ability to nest other scenes. This is a little nest. bit more advanced. We won't dwell on this too yeah, much. We'll, we'll I think we, <laughs> I think we did kind of mention this um, mm -hmm. <laughs> in in the other show that we did. But certainly, you can add text. You can add video capture devices. So this is where you want to bring in your webcam, or you know, if you've got a DS, DSLR camera or a cam link or capture card or something like that, you can do that as well. Uh, video source is sort of another option. You can use both uh, media source and video source for, for different things. And window capture, it's, you know, to capture a particular window on or particular application on your computer. So, I mean, just to give you a sense of how relatively straightforward this is, um, I, I was going to plug in my, my Logitech web camera to have a backup, but I, I just didn't have time but, uh, earlier today. But let's just make some stuff up. So let's imagine that this is... Um, I'm going to right-click on my first scene and we'll say start. I'm going to... And again, Sam, please feel free to butt in as I do this, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to add a color source. So if you want a static um, color here, I might just call this one white for ease of use. Um, I can come in here and select the color. And it's funny, that looks white, but it's not as white as I would like it to be. So I'm going to go FFFF. 
Um, and again, you can actually adjust the size of this. So if you only wanted a single bar of color, maybe you've got a bit of a banner ad happening at the bottom of the screen, you could certainly do that as well. You can also just come in and crop these things. So um, if you hold down the Alt key in OBS, you can sort of crop in and out. And the, the, the newer versions will actually tell you the pixel dimensions, which is really awesome because yeah. before that was the case, you kind of had to guess a little bit on how you were you know, resizing yeah. these things. Yeah, I, I would take a quick side note here when, before you get too fancy, mm -hmm. but if you are blessed with multiple monitors, you can also right click on the program, the big white square, uh, and select a, uh, an output to put it onto another monitor so you can kind of see those finer adjustments as well. Yes, yep, that's that's awesome. Okay, um, I just want, I'm sort of multitasking a little bit, but I just want to acknowledge the chat. Um, Okay, so Walter is saying that he has a be right back screen mm -hmm. for emergencies um, when the wife or daughter need me right away. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really useful thing to, to incorporate. And I guess the other thing too, like it doesn't necessarily need to just say um, be right back. Like it could, um, it could be an ad for, for another stream or another show or, you know, um, I, I guess it's just about setting some expectations so people know what is actually happening. So that, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, yeah, any any of those sort of static screens is like a great place to put other, you know, like media, uh, mm -hmm. like clips or playlists, or yes, just redirect to other things and and whatever a call to action. Sure. So, um, and let's just go back to OBS here. So, basically, I've I've got a white background, and I know you're saying that's not exciting, and you would be right to say that. Um, but we can also go in, we can add some some text and some images. So we've got our text options. Again, it's a really good idea to, to give things meaningful names because you'll start out quite simply. Yes. You can actually get pretty complicated. So I will say starting soon text. It's going to make the source visible. And from here, I can say starting soon. It will uh, you'll see that I've got white text. <laughs> yes. So white on white is not a great option, but basically we can uh, come down and we can find our color and I can change that. So maybe, I don't know. Black. I guess if you are a design nerd, it's really cool that you have the ability to use the hex colors, the RGB, or the HSV options there as well, because I will have uh, colors on my website that I want to reproduce really carefully, so I will often do that. But yeah. again, just for today's purposes, I've got this here. Um, I could bring in an image, um, and again, I could just say this is you know my thumbnail. We could, of course, have changed the fonts and stuff, but I know we've got a lot to get through, so I'm just going to do this really, really quickly. Um, I'm not even sure what's going to pop up here, so I might even just... Uh... I don't know, that's not responding for me. Just one second. I'm going to move this over to another screen where I can play with it. Um, but mm -hmm. basically, all I'm going to do is find an image on my computer. Um... And I guess the thing about being, if you're into video or live streaming, you're going to have a lot of thumbnails created in the background. So you will have things to work with. And I guess in some ways it can be really tempting to just sort of do things once and forget about them entirely. But let me, I'm, I'm going to bring in today's thumbnail and I'm going to go, okay. And again, I can reposition that. Um, I can, if I grab the corner and drag it in, it will repurpose that proportionally. So I've got that there, good to go. Um, so, and again, I'd probably go in and change uh, fonts and things and make it look a little bit prettier, but just because we do have so much to cover today, I just want to get through this. So we can come in and actually just create a, a second scene to get into the new one, but uh, something that can save you a lot of time is you can actually just right click on here and duplicate this and, uh, you know, I'll say the camera or John or whatever it may be. And I've got a, a duplication of that same thing. So here I can start making changes. So maybe I want the white background on everything, but I don't want anything else. So I can actually come in here and I can delete these. I can do that with either the trash can or I can hit the delete key on my keyboard. You do also have the option to toggle the visibility. So if you, uh, if you actually wanted to um, have something there for reference, but maybe not necessarily on the screen, you can certainly get rid of it in that way as well. Um, so Sam, is there, I, I guess, you know, are there the things that you would sort of recommend um, people do in terms of just getting started in, in the first place with, with their, their first scene collection? I mean, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, uh, once you've gotten past that step of sort of 
analyzing the the media that you do need and all of that go on and just like drop it all in and 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 make a mess and then in time you'll be like oh this is how i could have done that better but <laughs> like one of the things you should think about is if you are doing um Oh, just a, a whole lot of things that get used repeatedly in a bunch of your scenes. You do want to maybe consider uh, a nested scene, which I don't really think we should go in too much because that could get really confusing, but it's basically putting a scene into another scene with a bunch of those elements, uh, which we do talk about in one of our previous episodes. But if you're someone who specifically does a lot of gameplay, um, there are, you know, or you're a Twitch streamer, within that realm as well. There are a lot of things out there that use uh, those browser alerts and putting those all in one overlay sort of scene that you then put into all of your other scenes is a really good idea. Then you don't have to have 20 different sources in every single scene repeated. It's just one mm -hmm. thing. It's generally something you're gonna want in every scene anyway. Absolutely. I guess um, the the other thing um, that might be worth noting, and again, I realize this is a completely trivial example here, mm -hmm. but um, you, you can, if these things are all related and you want them to stay together, if you, you select them, yes. you can hold down uh, control to grab them all. I think if you hold down shift, you can get one from, from the other. But then we can actually come in and right click and go to uh, group selected items. Yeah, and this look this basically creates its own little folder here. So these things are together. The great thing about this is that you can now toggle the visibility of the entire group. So mm -hmm. if you and, and it could be that maybe the thing that's on the screen that you've grouped together is maybe uh, you know a color source, some an image, and some text. Maybe it's a banner that you want to pop up on the screen occasionally, but not all the time. You can literally just hit that uh, that visibility icon. You can also set up a button on your Stream Deck to do that for you as well, which is really, really awesome if you have a Stream Deck. So keep that in mind. Um, I guess, you know, if we go back to here though, in terms of actually adding a web camera or a video camera, again, I don't have a second camera, so I'm not really <laughs> sure how this is going to go, but I'll just talk uh, you through it conceptually. I mean, Sam it'll let to... you add the uh, OBS virtual camera, it right? It will, yes. Yeah. Which so... will look messy, but at least you get the idea. <laughs> so essentially, if we go to the plus sign, we can go to uh, add our video capture device. And again, I would call this camera or Sony or Logitech or something. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what you call these, but they should mean something to you because once you get a number yeah. of these, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I've already yeah, used that uh, especially if you have multiple cameras. Yep. So you'll see that I've actually used that to describe the scene and I can't do that for the scene and source because it'll get confused. So I'm just going to call this one Sony camera and I'll go OK. And basically it'll bring up the options here. So. I've got a whole bunch of different virtual cameras on here. Um, I've never actually used the NDI ones, but I, I wanted to play with them one day. But essentially, I could come in and grab my Camlink camera um, or the OBS virtual camera. I'm not sure how this is going to go, but I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> let's let's just, if, if it falls apart, um, Sam can stall and we'll, we'll continue in a second. Um, okay, so it will, That's because fine. I'm sharing my screen at the moment, it is a bit of inception, but so let's... I, I guess for the moment, let's just pretend that we're working with the uh, the NDI video camera, and hopefully I haven't... I mean, there's nothing there for it to capture, so... Right. I wonder, like, again, I'm, I'm tempting fate so badly right now, but I'm going to try my <laughs> cam link. Okay, it can't access it because it's in use. That's fine. Yeah. All right, no worries. So, again, I'm, I apologize. I really did intend to have Logitech somewhere, but I don't know where it is right now. But essentially what you can do is you can bring that over here. Um, there are options. So if you want to configure this um, in a different way, you can certainly do that. But let's just imagine that this is, um, is, is good to go. I guess the other thing, too, is that... Um, if we go into the properties, and you can sort of double click to do that here as well. In this case, because this is a, a virtual camera, it's not giving me audio options, but this is also the place where we would get audio options. So yep. generally speaking, you probably don't want to capture the audio from your video camera unless you've got some sort of um, video mic um attached and set up well generally speaking you probably want these to be different things and i guess 
that's the point at which I can either mute the audio on my video camera or I can nominate a different audio source. So this is this is something it's a little abstract, so just just bear with us, but I think it's worth worth talking about, Sam. So uh, I can do one of two things at this point. I could say, hey, I want this microphone to come in with this camera all the time, or I can mute the camera and I can have the audio as its own thing separately. And sometimes you may want to use the audio um, without the camera. Maybe you want to hear that separately. And depending on how your scene is set up. So if I'm... Uh, and to be honest, with my coffee and content show, I th- I could be... I'm trying to remember how I set that up. It's been so long since I've looked at it. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think I, I might have those as separate things. So, like, if you take that classic sort of... Um, in fact, I'll do it now. So I've got the I've got the screen share here, and I'm in front of it. But I've also got an option where I take myself out of the action because I want to right. show you some of those buttons over here. So um, I, I guess one or two things could be happening here. And to be honest, I can't even tell you which one it is without looking it up. But I could be underneath the screen share, or I could have had uh-huh. the camera hidden completely. So sure, I'm. I, I know that's that's a, that's very abstract. But I'm curious. Do you have any thoughts on maybe the best approach, especially for for a beginner, in terms I, of that? You know, I personally. Uh, have been burned too many times by forgetting to put audio in a scene. So I now put my mic in my overlay scene and it's just nested on every scene. Now, if you're doing something like the five scene example that we've given with has a start and an end, uh, in my version, I'd have live audio on both of those. But if that's something you don't want, then you'll need to make an adjustment for that. And, you know... (laughs) And I, Do it a different I, way. I, I suspect Sam has said has heard me say this a few times, but I deliberately don't have my audio on um, my microphone on the start and end screen because sure. sometimes I can be nervously it muttering things to myself. Yeah. So, um, and it's it's actually one thing that kind of annoys me about Restream Studio is that we do have some theme music and our mics are both just live all live. the time yeah. while that's happening. So, you know, if anybody bangs anything, you, you hear it straight away. So, yeah. I guess you know that's that's worth exploring. And I guess the other thing that we probably didn't mention that might be worth mentioning too is that. Um, and I'll just move to this one. So we, we do have our scenes and our sources, but we also have the ability to create different scene collections. So yeah. um, honestly, you can create all kinds of collections in here. You can play with them. You don't necessarily need to go live. You could record locally. You could just play. But just figure out what's going to work best for you because it could be a situation where maybe you you definitely just want the audio and the video together all the time. And there are a few different ways of doing that. And I guess, especially for beginners, it probably would make more sense to actually come in here and um, and nominate the microphone with the, the video and have those together. So it's, it's a little abstract and I, I kind of didn't want to get that advanced um, this, this quickly, but I think it's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, yeah, just, you know, think of seeing collections as you know, different show formats. So maybe, you you know, maybe you do a bunch of different things. You do like Thursdays, you do Call of Duty streams and play games and like Saturdays, you do a podcast. Those could be different scene collections. They could be one and you just have a bunch of different scenes within it. Um, if it's something where you might want to do one and go into the other, that's probably just one scene collection. Um, cause if your scene collections get too big and you're like, and now we're going to go into the podcast and you go to make that switch in OBS, it could crash OBS. It mm. could work. It could crash. <laughs> And I guess that's the thing, like the more you add to your more sources, you add to your scenes and the more scenes you have, potentially it can be more intensive on your computer. And I mean, the, the nice thing about, um, and I, I, there was a time I was having some weird memory issues, um, Mm -hmm. not, not that long ago, actually. And the nice thing about that was I was able to duplicate my scene collection and I could just remove any of the things that I didn't need for day-to-day stuff. And I guess to your point, Sam, too, like I, I literally have a scene collection called Day Job, um, <laughs> in, which is just, you know, my, my nine to five and I have branding for my company and stuff like that. And I've got different things for different shows. So that's that's another way of, of working as well. Um, so I guess let's... Um, you know, we, we'll. I, I didn't do this plug earlier in, in the day, so I'm going to do it now, and we'll come back and we'll talk more about OBS. But um, 
if you, if you didn't know, I have a little podcast. <laughs> so enjoy. We'll be back in just a second. I'm John Lacey, and in Build a Presentation Muscle, I want to talk about finding your voice, refining and sharing your message, using tools and technology to share that message, and looking after yourself as a creator. And that's available wherever you get good podcasts and Google Podcasts, who I have a bit of a grudge against. But anyway, um, <laughs> actually, Sam, yeah. I, I understand you have a little bit of podcasting news too. Um, yeah, uh, this show is now available as a podcast, pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts. <laughs> is that what you were thinking of? <laughs> yes, yeah. So I guess, uh, like, I, I get the impression it's predominantly on, on Spotify at the moment. So I, I guess maybe it'll go to other places. I couldn't find it on my podcast app this morning, but I'm yeah, sure we'll I, work on that. I make, like, I just got a bunch of the other platforms uh, linked up and submitted. So yeah, we're still waiting for some of those things to come through. I think, I'm not sure if it's just because I'm there, but I'm pretty sure I can see it on Apple. Uh, but we should be on pretty much all the major podcast places. Um, but yes, uh, Spotify, which apparently acquired Anchor without me realizing it, is our main hub. So everything's hosted there and goes out from it. Uh, and it should be both as video and audio. So uh, yeah, in, enjoy this. If you, if you can't make the show on Friday, should have it up by Monday every week. Nice. And this is the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey and I'm joined by Sam Proof. And again, just a reminder, if you're just joining us, Sam just turned 50, so that's why I'm a little bit more dressed up than I normally am. So, happy birthday, Sam. I hope, I hope it hasn't been too harrowing, the, uh, the aging. No. Although it's, it's I'm, I'm, awesome. a lot, I, I'm a little bit younger than you, and I'm, I'm such an old man, it's not even funny. So, <laughs> age is probably just a number. All right. So, Sam, um, in terms of... And again, it, this, I feel bad because I, I do have other examples that would have worked a little bit better than this had I actually plugged in the other webcam, but... Um, so essentially if we go back to, to OBS here, so, you know, once we've, we've got our camera here, uh, I guess the next thing we want to think about is, is audio. So, um, and in Walter's saying happy, happy birthday. So Thank yes, you, that's awesome. Uh, yes. Okay. So I guess the audio, um, is something that is a little bit tricky to wrap your brain around. So I did want to acknowledge this up front. So... There are a couple of things here, and uh, outside of the, the Sony camera, I haven't actually added any of these ones yet. So, at the moment, I've, I've got this desktop audio, and I, I'm probably just going to mute that one for the moment. I typically do as well. Yes. So, I mean, there's a good chance that, you know, we could actually go... So, with the audio mixer, and if, again, if you're not seeing the audio mixer, you can go to Docs and go to Audio Mixer and just make sure it's visible there. But one... Most of the things that we want to look at in terms of this is actually clicking on these three dots and going down to audio, advanced audio properties, which I realize is behind me, um, but trust me, it's there. Uh, and we'll get something like this. So basically, we've got uh, our different options here. And again, I'm just going to, what I might do for just before we get started, I'm going to actually add an audio input capture. So I'm going to come here, go add audio input. I'm going to, I'm just going to call this one the Roadcaster because that's what everything comes in on my device. So from here, I can go to Roadcaster Stereo. Um, there is a plugin that will let you work with the multi-channel. I've spoken about that in the past, so check out um, our, our episode on that. But essentially, uh, if I go down to Advanced Audio Properties now... We've, we've got all these different devices and I think what we need to, to think about is which ones are you actually using? Any of these ones that pop up automatically that you don't want, just make sure you go in and mute those. But again, the Roadcaster, we do want it to be active. I can see down the bottom here that uh, that I'm, I'm sort of in this yellow zone and that's basically where I want to be. I don't want to spike into the red. I don't want to be too far down in the green. So. I can sort of make adjustments um, here. I can do them on the physical device, whatever I need to do to make that work. But I guess the really important thing to note is in the audio monitoring. So yep. 
this this is such a trap and I've fallen for this trap and I can tell you it's really painful to do to spend a whole week preparing something and do a hour show and realize none of the audio went out. That's a mistake you will only make once, I assure you. Um, yeah. But here, we've, we've basically got our options here. So monitor off, which basically means you won't hear it in the, the audio. You won't hear it in your headphones necessarily, but it will go out to the stream. Monitor only. This is the one you want to avoid because you will hear it and nobody else will hear it. And monitor and output are uh, uh, when you hear it and the stream hears it. So be really, really careful um, about making sure you do that because... Especially when I add videos to, to play within my streams, I want to make sure that, you know, that they're actually, that I'm, I'm actually hearing them and, and they're going out as the, the output. So again, just, just be really wary of this monitor only. The one place, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that on the stream, but I, I, I just got a bit of feedback there. So that was really weird. Oh, no, you can hear the feedback, thankfully, but yeah, I, yeah. I saw that. You okay. accidentally click the one thing you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the only place that you might want to uh, have the have that one option is if if you're if you're working with a system, and this is probably something Sam can speak to more uh, that that actually gives you commands or gives you notifications that you want to hear and respond to, um, that, but without sending them out to the live stream. And I guess yeah. one of one of the things that I find slightly annoying about Ecamm Live is that. Every time you get a chat message, uh, it does an audible sound. Mm -hmm. And there's some if you've got a popular chat, that that sound is so annoying to me. I don't know what it is, but it's just it's like a form of water torture. It's just repetitive and it just I, I just want people to turn it off. And I'm told <laughs> that there it is possible to do that, but again, I'm not an ECAM person, so I I don't know how true that is. But anyway, uh so we want to make sure those are there. And I guess, you know, it's a it's a really good idea, and especially before you go live, um, just just make a recording. Just make sure that you can hear the audio before you go out yeah. live, um, and keep in mind too that if I, I keep keep an eye on on the audio mixer here, if I move over to my start screen, I don't have the roadcaster there, so you're not hearing anything from the roadcaster on this on this scene. So, yeah. especially if I wanted to use the music from from the roadcaster, I definitely need to go in and add my source. If you've already added the source in previously, you can come in here, and you can actually go to add existing and just select it from the list, and then it'll be there, good to go. So, just make sure that if something isn't physically on a scene or part of a nested scene within your scene, uh, you're not going to have access to it there unless you add it. So. Again, if you toggle the visibility, obviously you can't see sounds generally, but in this case, it just means that it's it's not available uh, in terms of the audio. Yeah, and um, just a, a quick side uh, for that. If you right click on the audio mixer itself, it'll give you um, the option to adjust to a vertical layout so that all those horizontal bars become vertical bars which if you have a lot of sound sources, once you get past three, you're not gonna see them anymore and you're gonna have to scroll through it. So you may wanna opt for that. It gives you a shorter sort of uh, drag response area, but it will give you more. Um, also, in the, in the case of like, we're not using that desktop audio, right? Uh, you can right click on that or I could probably do the three buttons and then you can hide it and that just takes it off of there completely. There you go. And uh, if you decide, oh man, I need to find a source that I can't, you just right click on the audio mixer itself and unhide all and they, everything comes back. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know any of those things, Sam. So this has been <laughs> most educational. Very good. Yeah, I, I love to have it in vertical because uh, yeah three is not enough <laughs> nice that that is really cool all right um so this is the video and live streaming show today we're talking all about obs studio for beginners we know that it can be a little bit overwhelming at times for, for people that are new to this piece of software but we kind of want to help you overcome the fear a little bit so if you do have questions about obs um that that would be really cool to include them in the chat we are going out to all the various places i know i didn't say that at the beginning of the show but it's it's true we are so if you are watching live let us know where you're watching from and again um you know what and i know a lot of people aren't using obs so if you are using something else let us know what you're using we'd love to hear about that as well Okay, so um, 
I don't know how we're going for time. Okay, so we've got like 10 minutes, 10 minutes. left. The, the hour has flown really, really quickly. Um, so I think one of the things we didn't really touch on that maybe we should have touched on before we set up any of that stuff was establishing what our resolution is, mm -hmm. um, which you're going to want to do in the settings for OBS. Uh, so on that, the right side under where John is, there's going to be a bunch of buttons. One of those says settings, you click that and bring it up and it will give you the ability to go to your video output and you can set the size of your canvas resolution or it's base or canvas resolution, which is what you're actually working with in OBS. Like that's how it's uh, interpreting that and what John has as a white field essentially. And then under it, it has a output or scaled resolution. So if for any reason you want that to not be the same as your canvas uh, and don't ever go above the canvas, you only ever wanna go below. So if your canvas is set up as a uh, 1080 HD and you're like, well, my stream can't really handle that, you're gonna pull that down to uh, scaled at like 720 or something. So just so you know. Um, yeah, you wanna set that up first because if you start putting all these scenes together and this thing isn't set for 1080 or whatever it is that is best for you, uh, and then later on you go to up res your base canvas, it's everything's gonna be moved around essentially. So yeah, Absolutely. It's, it's a good starting point. It really is. And I guess, um, you know, in, and this, this is kind of what it's defaulted to from this, this new version that I've installed. Yeah, it before should the show default started, to which 1080. Is, which is really good actually, because um, that, that, that's a, that's a good starting point because when I started, it was really, the settings were all over the shop and I did actually record some videos that were just unusable because I hadn't yeah. checked those settings first. So that, that's oh. a really good thing to check out. Uh, that does remind me, it does default to, um, I guess that's only if you flip it to advanced. We probably don't need to get into that, but... Yeah, let's let's avoid the advanced this week. Yeah, <laughs> all right. But yeah, if you if for some reason you've, you've got problems and it's just not starting streaming, just get in touch with me. I know what it is. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, awesome. So that, that's a really good thing to keep in mind. So I guess... Um, Something else I was going to say, and it's completely skipped my my mind. So I guess um one one last thing that we should really cover before we wrap up, and we really are getting close to to time. Um, it's amazing how quickly this has gone. So yeah, in terms of actually streaming, so yes. um, depending on the service that you're using, it has a whole bunch of different options here. So there are a few by default. You can go show all, and so they've got the the. Some of the common ones, you can you can just go in there and you can essentially log in or use a stream key. Um, if, if it isn't supported, you can go to show all, see even more. But generally speaking, you also have this custom option. And really, mm -hmm. you just want to make sure that you put in the, the server information and the stream key. Again, the stream key is usually incredibly long, but it is sensitive information. So if you do make any videos about learning to stream, make sure you blur that stuff out. Yeah. Um, you may or may not need authentication depending on the service you're using. But once you've set that up, um, you've got got your scenes ready to go. And again, I'm going to move myself out of the way here because this is where the, the magic really happens is in these controls. And again, if you're not seeing the controls, just go to docs and uh, make sure controls is actually selected. Um, and then once you're good to go, you can hit start streaming. Again, keep in mind that you may have a little bit of lag uh, between what you're doing and it reaching its destination. So... I, 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 like, it sounds like such a trivial thing, but including those, um, those start and end screens is just a game changer. It's just really massively important. So once you've got that, you, you're kind of good to go. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I don't know. The, again, there's a lot of different places we could have gone. There's a lot of sources we haven't explored today. We're, yeah. we're very keen to do more shows on, on this subject in the future. So again, if there are specific things you want to know, please let us know in the chat wherever you happen to be watching this. But I guess, Sam, do you have any sort of final thoughts um, on today's topic? Yeah, I mean, those are the, the absolute basics to get you going with just some easy scenes and sources and like make things happen. But like we've said time and time again, OBS is like this very powerful program that can do anything you can imagine and more so. And there's 
scripts and plugins and chatbots and all of these other things that can just enhance the experience and make it bigger and better. Um, so like, don't, you know, don't just sit there and be like, oh, that's it. All I need is this one camera. If you can think of something better, we can figure out how to get it done. <laughs> Yeah, although I, I guess... Don't do everything. <laughs> I, you know, there, there are a couple of different ways of looking at that. And I guess, you know, Sam is such a nerdy, geeky person that he wants to go to deep her. on all of the things. Like, he loves it. And that's awesome. But I, I, I guess I would probably encourage you not to get too complex too too quickly because that in itself can no, be overwhelming. And I guess the thing that I, I like to underline every time we talk about this is... Whenever you're doing a live show, you're you're wearing a lot of different hats. You can be mm-hmm. the on on air, on camera talent. You can be the producer. You can be operating the cameras, um, and, and the comments and all of the things. So I guess you know, especially for the coffee and content show, I have like five or six buttons. I I know where to talk uh, and look, and that that's usually good enough for me. So again, like what, whatever you want to do. Um, again, if you want to head over to uh. Uh, in fact, I'll ask you first, Sam, where can people learn more about you and all the exciting things that you, you'd like to do and, and the content and all that great stuff? Sure, yeah. If you want to find out more about me, go to samproof.tv. You can find all my links there. And if if this is too much, if you think, oh man, you know what? I don't think I want to run OBS. You could always hire me to run OBS for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And if you want to uh, check out anything that I'm I'm doing, you can head over to johnlacy.com. Um, bit of a shameless plug. Like I have a lot of content about OBS. So if you want to head over to the website, I've got things about different plugins, uh, working with LinkedIn, um, screen sharing, the OBS challenge, which I sort of mentioned earlier. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things here. And you can also find, you know, the, the podcast and other exciting things. So if you're interested in any of that, head over to johnlacy.com. Um, so Sam, is there, uh, you know, I guess again, happy birthday. I hope you're enjoying you. being 50. I know it has been a, a crazy week and I hope it settles down a little bit, but, yeah. um, enjoy, enjoy the weekends. Yeah, no, you too. Um, yeah, Hey, I got nothing. Uh, 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 Walter had said just stream yard in the, uh, in the yes. chat. So yes, if, if you still find OBS too intimidating, StreamYard or Restream are perfectly acceptable, easy to use options just to get you streaming in the meantime. Check those out as well. Yeah, and I, to be honest, I think that's that's a good place for most people to start. Um, yeah, uh, it's just that we we love OBS. Like you know, we yeah. we never tire of talking about OBS. I guess the other thing too. Um, If you head over to LinkedIn, I actually have a Learn OBS Studio group on LinkedIn now. So if you want to search for that one, you can check it out as well. Again, I know a lot of people are scared of, like nothing makes me sadder than hearing people go, OBS is scary. So I really kind of want to bridge that gap a little bit. And that's not to say that OBS is necessarily always the right answer for for your streaming or video projects, but I just don't... I just don't want people to be scared of it. Like it, it may or may not be right for you, but you don't need to fear it. No, it's, you know, just dive in. You'll get it. it it's not going to be that hard. <laughs> just make a few scenes. Absolutely. All right. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, uh, head over to uh, Learn Live Streaming on YouTube or Sam Proof on YouTube. And we've got a whole bunch of other resources and things you can check out as well. Uh, if there's something you'd like to hear us talk about on future shows, please let us know because we'd love to hear about the things that you'd like us to cover. It cracks me up every time that we get to the end of the show and Sam's fancy LED lights just turn themselves off. You wouldn't think it would be so noticeable, but it captures my eye every single time it happens. It's It's hilarious. (laughs) They're automated and I don't remember where I automated that. So, (laughs) Um, But yeah, we are available as a podcast now. Soon it'll be in all of the podcast places. uh, So we'll definitely do a more definitive call to action on that in the future. But yes, if you miss this show live, you can always find it again as a podcast or in the archives on any of our video channels. Uh, But you can always join us uh, Fridays live. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, Thanks for for Walter for joining us in the the chat and CG as well. Um, We'll be back to talk to you about another exciting topic next week. So have a great weekend. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you again soon.